Psalms chapter 45 To the chief musician upon Shalashnanim, the sons of Korah, Mashiel, a song of love. Now, Shalashnanim, it means lilies. Uh, springtime, it's connected with the Passover season. And it's to remind you to the redemption out of bondage and out of the origins of Israel. <clears throat> and some people think, you know, with church, with lilies, would mean, you know, Easter bunnies and that other junk. No, it's to bring you the time that he's a lily in the valley. He's the one that brought them out of the land of Egypt. <clears throat> Sons of Korah, again, those are the Levites. Those that had in charge of, of the holy stuff. A song of loves. So it starts off my heart. So what's the sign in the world of love and they don't even know it comes out of the King James Bible? Psalms 45. Is indicting a good matter. Well, Jeremiah says the heart is deceitful above all things, so this must be a heart that's after God. <clears throat> and speaketh of things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Writes what he's, what, what's going to be said. Inspiration. <clears throat> Ready to record. Thou art fairer than the children of men. There's one that uh, David's son, Absalom, was beautiful and all that. And he was wrong, wicked. David was, was ruddy and fair. Grace is poured into thy lips. So the mouth, the words are grace. Well, you ain't talking about a wicked one. <clears throat> well, therefore God has blessed thee forever. You speak of grace and you're going to get a blessing forever. Pastor spoke about our mouths this morning in Sunday school. What will be the time when the Lord judges us for all our words and what we spoke and how we spoke and why we spoke? Forever. So if you speak grace, that God is grace, the Lord Jesus Christ is grace, it's a forever reward. Everything else is foolishness and just burns up at the judgment seat of Christ. <clears throat> Gird thy sword upon thy thigh. And get ready for battle. O most mighty army, with thy glory and thy majesty. Well, that's not our American troops. Not many of them glory, not many of them majesty. The troops of Israel, those were under God. <clears throat> and in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. So that means you go into battle with truth. No lies. You'll know exactly why you're fighting. You know why you're invading. And God gave rules in the law. Those that were to be in the land, you were to get rid of. And don't make no leads with them. He says also those that are out of the land, he says you send an ambassador of peace first. And if they don't seek the peace, then you're allowed to go tack. That's the law. That's the truth. You don't go fight other people's battles because you think you are Mr. One and Number One country in the world. Because if you fight a battle that God has not ordained, and God does ordain battles, ask David, then it's not uh, feud, it's not blood of war, it'd be blood of murder, as Joab. So you better make sure that the war, the battle you're fighting in is God ordained, and don't go in running in there with a the Roman Catholic God. That America has gone and fight for the Roman Catholic Church, and it's murder. It's a lie because you say that God's of the Roman Catholic Church and God is not of the Roman Catholic Church. So truth. 
meekness. You go over there not because look at look at the powers we are, look at who we are. No, you go over there and say, Lord, Israel, we're your servants. We can't do nothing. We read in the last chapter, we can't do nothing without you. It ain't our weaponry, it's you. And if you're not with us, we're going to get our butts beat. And righteousness. Doing that which is right in the eyes of God. And thy God's right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Now that ain't terrible like, oh, how bad. That's, that's wonderful, great, beyond compassion things. What are the terrible things? <clears throat> a little boy, well not a little boy, a young man that, that takes down an enemy with, with a stone. Uh, <clears throat> Samson with a jawbone of an ass. Moses having his hands being lifted up and put on a rock to keep him up. Joshua, he said, the Lord let the sun stay still. One of David's men cleaved to the sword. It became part of him. One angel destroyed an entire army and left enough of them to go back and tell the story. That's the terrible things you learn in the Bible. They're wonderful things. How God destroyed Egypt to get his people out of the land. And those were terrible things. How would you like to have a bunch of frogs and <coughs> locusts running around in your bed and your hair and your everything that you do? Thine arrows, God's arrows, are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. Well, there's a king in Israel. And if you get a, an arrow in your heart, you ain't you ain't going to live much longer. Like that little naked little thing that runs around shooting arrows in the, into lovers' hearts. Well, that's, that causes death. That doesn't cause love. How stupid are you? you got to be stupid to believe that crap. You be shoot with Cupid's arrow and you, and it means love. You no, know, it means you need to go to the emergency room. You need to take little Cupid and have him arrested. And you as a Christian need your head your head examined. Whereby the people fall under thee. Did you get that? People fall under the arrows. You die when you get hit with an arrow. God has a sword and he has arrows. Satan has darts. The Bible says. And he has teeth. Like unto a lion. Seeking whom he may devour. Thy throne. O God. Is forever. And ever. Not just forever but another ever thrown in there. You know that ever, you know that that forever is the life of the earth. Time as time will be. And then once time disappears before Revelation 20, that other ever there, all eternity. Now we have every four years we have three or four men that fight for uh, office, an oval office, but that's going to be gone one year. The Prime Minister of Israel, just or the past Prime Minister, has passed on. Somebody else will take the office. As old as she is, Lord Terry's the Queen is going to die someday. When? I don't know. But somebody will take her throne. Russia, his, the leader will die and somebody will take the Kremlin spot. But God's throne is forever and that throne has always been God. Satan tried to overthrow it and he's never going to get it. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. You mean after all the junk that, that goes on with all the kings of, of Judah? 
that God has to send Babylon in to destroy Judah and the, and the temple because uh, because of all the sin that God said, O earth, O earth, right this man childless, that <coughs> no man will, of this king, I forget what his name is, Jack and I, uh, uh, Jack and I, I forget. But the last king of Judah, God said, there is going to be no king from that seed. The glorification, the mercy, the greatness, the prophecy fulfilled of the virgin birth. The Lord Jesus Christ is the right scepter. And he will come back, that, that scepter will come back as a rod of iron in the second advent, the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he'll sit in Jerusalem as king, as the right scepter. And then he'll sit as judge at the great white throne judgment with right judgment, right scepter. And everything will be right at that point. That's what the right scepter means. Everything will be right. You're not going to mark up to Jesus at, at the judgment and say, Oh, it's a black thing. Or I was a Mexican. Or I was a, the, the, the minority. So, you're guilty. Oh, I just never knew. You're guilty. I'm a female. You're guilty. How about, Lord, if I give you a hundred bucks? Guilty. Oh, I was a ju guilty. Thou, God, the King, lovest righteousness. God is love. But there's a comma. And hateth wickedness. God hates things. As much as God loves things. What is righteousness? When you do what the Bible says to do and you rightly divide. What is wickedness? When you do exactly opposite what the Bible says. Plain and simple. Your King James Bible is a right Bible. Your modern Bible is a wicked Bible. When you do something in witnessing to people the way God tells you to witness people, that's right. When you come up with programs and, and doodads and games and, and toys and buzzers and clowns and whatever you have, that's wickedness. When God tells you what holidays to serve and to do and to, to look forward to and to study, and you do the, the holidays and the wickedness of a church and of the world, that's wickedness. I mean, we're not told to obey the Jewish law. We're not under law. But it would be great for you to look at the Jewish holidays, not an I. I means me. How about a Y for holy? Then when all those holy days represented one, Jesus Christ. And you try to take this crap with Christmas. Oh, it's no, it ain't Jesus. And you are a liar. I don't care who you are. Because I have not found one church that puts into anything of the feast days of Israel that is likened to Jesus Christ. Oh, you know there's a holiday coming up in the church. You know that? Let's see, we're going to have one in a couple weeks, uh, MLK, the liar, the fornicator. He doesn't even know his name. It was Michael Luther King. Get away from my Protestant leader that led the church outright. That's going to be a church holiday. I'll tell you the next holiday. I don't know if it comes before or that, because I don't care. It's going to be a time, it's going to be a Sunday night when they pass a pigskin. And all the churches, even Bible-believing King James honoring churches, are going to shut down services. They're going to rent or use their big screen TV, and they're going to invite the people in and watch a bunch of people throw a stupid ball from end to end to end to end. And then when you see a booby in the middle of the, of the, of the entertaining the halftime set, you're going to get all upset because a booby showed up on TV when you shouldn't even been watching the TV. How about that? 
Now I got a sore throat and a cough and all that, and I still can preach. The commercials. Everybody watching the beer commercial. The girls half undressed commercial. Oh, we don't want. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And a pig's hunky eyeball. The little leaven leavens a whole bunch. You know, there was one church, I guarantee, one day that started that. We'll have the football thing or the baseball, whatever. i probably do it for all. One church did that, started that. <clears throat> and look where it is today. And I can name five churches I know for sure in my home state that have it. And one of them is a good church. I'm not. I'm gonna say was because I don't know anymore about that. Next. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Looks like the Lord Jesus Christ to me. You know what anointed means, Bible scholars, Christians. Let me ask you a question. You know what Christ means? Christ means anointed. God's anointed one. Messiah means that which God has put the oil above thy fellows. Could be us. Above all of us, all the Old Testament saints that did right are in Abraham's bosom, bosom that has gone to heaven. Of all the born-again Bible-believing Christians that are saved by the blood, Jesus Christ will be over and above us all. We're not going to sing praises to me. We're not going to sing praises to you. It ain't going to be about, you know, I don't even think we're going to even say the word I in heaven or me or myself. I wouldn't be surprised if those three words God says, nope, not allowed here, no more. I wouldn't be surprised. Because it's going to be about Jesus. The main pronoun word you're going to use in heaven is you. I did this for you. Yes, Lord, from from. For us, you did it. Us, the church. Finally, one corporate unity. When you get to heaven, it's not going to be one Christian. It's going to be the whole body of the church. Finally. And all thy garments smell of myrrh. Well, myrrh is, is associated with death and burial. And it smells good. And aloes. And cassia. <clears throat> out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. Makes me wonder if that's what they anointed Jesus with at his, at his burial. And verse 8, you can match with, my voice goes, forgive me, Song chapter 1, Song, yeah, Song of Song chapter 1, verse 3. <clears throat> Beautiful book on the relationship between Christ and the church. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Song of Solomon 6 8. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen of queen in gold of Ophir. So, when you look at a couple who's going to get married, as they stand before the preacher, the bride is on the right hand side. In gold. Gold is one of the earned rewards. Gold, silver, precious stones. I do believe that there was a custom that brides would wear pearls, too. That's a costly stone. 
Be no, it'll be nothing old there, by the way. It'll be all new. Harkin' old daughter. So we're called a chaste virgin. We are called the bride of Christ. And consider and incline thy ear. He that hath the ear, let him... Mm -hmm. Forget also thy own people. And what did Jesus say? If you hate not your father, your mother, your brothers, your sisters, you cannot be my disciple. There's going to come a time when, when the saved and lost will be departed. <coughs> the saved will be caught up to glory. And that's it. Those that remain have done exactly what God did not want them to do. Sorry, I've got lost family, but if they don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, in glory, I'm going to forget about them. My own people. You're not going to remember Americans. Now, there's one, there's one other hope I may add here. As far as the bride. For it says in Romans chapter 10, round 13 and 14, that there's neither Jew or Greek. Now, there's possibly only one hope that for a group of people out of the church age will see some family that are not saved. It would be the Jewish people that got saved, that their family goes through the tribulation and obeys the law and heads down to sail of Peter or at least escapes the Antichrist. Now, that's going to be few. It's going to be a raiment, a very minute amount of Jewish people. But once the rapture happens, my friend, that divides us from the saved, those that obey God, from those that have not. And if grandma was not saved, you're not going to see her in heaven. That's just the truth. And thy father's house. Plain and simple. How many brothers and sisters actually got saved? That were brothers and sisters of Jesus. We only know of one, James. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty. Read Proverbs 31 to the closing of that, that chapter where it says beauty is vain and a woman that. Uh, Fear the Lord. Read that. You know, it's not going to be, oh, we're going to be beautiful and, and we're going to have plastic breasts or we're going to wear, you know, makeup and all that. It's not going to be that when, when, when Jesus prepares his bride. The beauty will be is, did you fear him? Proverbs 31. Did you obey him? Yeah, well, I got saved. That's not all. There are some of you out there who are saved and never been baptized. You know, if you have not been baptized, anything you've done for Christ will not go to your credit. You need to be born again, and then you need to be baptized. Then you go into all the world and preach the gospel. Trying to speak the truth. We're talking about the bride of Christ here. And the king is the Lord Jesus Christ. He will see us as beauty. After what? After the judgment seat of Christ. Because we ain't going to be in beauty before that. Only after. I don't think we're going to go to heaven after the rapture. I think right at the point of rapture, I think we are judged right then and there 
and how long it may be, the judgment seat of Christ, it may take the whole seven years. <clears throat> I don't know. For he is thy, for he is thy Lord. And worship thou him. Not too many people call the Lord Lord today. Not too many Christians worship him like they should. And the daughter of Tyre, that was a seaport up in the northwest section along the Mediterranean, shall be there with a gift. Now this is not the church age. This is going back to Jewish history. Tyre is gone. It's wiped off the map. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. So you've got, historically, you've got a, a, a wedding of a king and a queen. And the nations are going to come and bring gifts, historically. Prophetically, you've got the church and Jesus Christ, which will not match. No type will go all, all the way. <coughs> the king's daughter is all glorious within, inside her, within. Match that with Revelation 19, 7 through 10. Her clothing is of wrought gold. Well, the Bible speaks for us that righteousness, uh, white robes, or the white, uh, white linens is the righteousness of the saints. We're going to be in white. Maybe with a gold crown. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. Historically, it would happen. Fine needlework, the best. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. There's the virgins that, that show up in Matthew, the ten virgins. The five wise and the five unwise. It's not the church. When the, when the church marries Jesus Christ, then those that will come into the, to the bridal party, to the to the marriage, to the dinner, will be the guest of the Father, God. Companions, not the bride, companions. It's a big difference. If you take it anything like that, these virgins and the queen, you would have a less being. Uh, Folly that follow her shall be brought unto thee. With gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought. <clears throat> and you get the, the, the parables of the, the marriage feast that Jesus spoke about. And they shall enter into the king's palace. There's the parables that Jesus spoke. He spoke it. Here it is. After the king and queen has come together. And what happens after a marriage? You get the reception. The king comes and proclaims the bride. And those that don't have a garment, he's going to cast into the, to hell. And all those that do remain, here we are on the earth, here we are. Instead of thy fathers shall be thy children. Whom thou mayest make princes in all the earth. The millennium. A lot of the Jewish fathers are not going to be 
in the millennium. The Jews today outright reject Jesus Christ and are not obeying what God has told them to do, even in the law. They're in violation. They don't have priests. They don't have a temple. They don't go back to Jerusalem three times a year. And in the millennium, they're going to be choosing people out to be princes. I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations. <coughs> Therefore shall the people praise thee forever and the extra ever that goes with God's throne that we read in verse 6. I don't care about the United Nuts. I don't care about the Arabians. I mean as a group of people. There's coming a day when the nation of Israel will be proclaimed as glory for all the universe. The one race of people. It's not going to be the church. The church doesn't have a nation name in New Jerusalem. We are known as the Bride of Christ. That's not a nation name. We are one person, one woman to God, Jesus Christ. There will be a new, new uh, heavens for the Gentiles. They're not going to have a name that's going to be praised like names today. But you're going to know the name forever and ever and ever, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the twelve tribes. I'm sorry, it's not Ishmael. It's not Esau. There's one particular people that are God's people. They are the Jews. And you are told as a Christian to pray for them. You are told to witness to them. And you're told that God has not forsaken them totally. He will get a raiment out and put a new heart in them. And make them clean. And their sins he'll never remember again. You got to get that. That's just as important as Jesus was virgin born. Born in Bethlehem. Died on the cross. Was buried and arose again the third day. Because it's all about the Jews. It's all about Jesus. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displays. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee, how great Thou art.